Hi. So, how to spot a bisexual? Good question. Good question. And the short answer is, there is no way to spot a bisexual. Um, and that's actually one of the problems, major problems with the bisexual community. The fact that we can't find each other. Even if we wanted to find each other, we can't. And branding is really what the problem is. Interesting story. When I was a kid, uh, my old brother came to me and he said, did you know that if a guy wears one earring that he's gay? And I went, no. And he went, no, really, they are. They're, they're actually, they want you to know that's why they're doing it. And I went, oh, okay, that's okay. And from that point forward, like when I was seven, moving forward, I always looked because I thought it was fascinating that, that this would be the case. And sure enough, I saw guys with only one earring and apparently they were gay. And one day I was watching a cartoon, I think it was like Johnny Quest or Sinbad or something, and there was this black dude on who had a bald head and he was really, really buff. And he had one earring on. I couldn't believe it. I called my brother and I said, hey, this character is gay. And then he said to me, no, 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 no. See, that the mistake is if you wear the earring on your right ear, you're gay. But if you wear an earring on your left ear like that dude did, that means you're really, really masculine. Now, granted, that was a little confusing. But I thought that was fascinating. And also moving forward, uh, you know, I came from the Bahamas, and it's, it's a really conservative country there. And there weren't a lot of feminine guys there because it could get you hurt, right? It's, it's, it wasn't great. Um, so I didn't grow up, like, seeing a lot of feminine guys. Uh, and I went to college, and in college, it was a middle, Midwestern college, I didn't, meet a, I didn't meet a lot of feminine, like, you know, gay dudes there either, right? So I lived in Los Angeles, and suddenly, like, there's a whole bunch of gay dudes that are like that stereotypical sort of just Jack from Will and Grace sort of characters. And I always wondered, how did that happen? Like, are they putting it on? Is that just the way they are? I mean, like, how, how did that come about? And then one day, very recently, I was watching TED Talk videos, and I saw this video called, Why Am I So Gay? And I thought, oh my God, this is brilliant. This is exactly what I need. And I watched the video, and it was this college dude talking. And the college dude was telling a story where he was in his hometown, and he was always trying to, you know, kind of mask the fact that he was gay. And then he came to college, and he came out. And after that, he decided that he was going to gay it up because he wanted other people, other gay people, to know that he was gay and to be a part of community by sharing kind of characteristics. It, he was exaggerating it on purpose. But I thought it was truly brilliant. Why? Because like the earring, it's branding. Because now anyone who sees a feminine gay dude, what's the first thing they think? Do they think, oh, this is just a feminine straight dude? No. Do we think, oh, that's a, just a feminine bisexual dude? No. The first place that everyone minds, everyone's mind usually goes to is that is a gay person. That is what you call branding. Same thing with a butch lesbian. Branding. And it's brilliant. So bisexuals are invisible. And part of it is that we don't have characteristics that kind of just are somehow associated with being bisexual. We don't speak a certain way. We don't look a certain way. So for a long time I've been thinking, what could bisexuals do? that could represent to perhaps the outside world, but more importantly to other bisexuals, that a person is bisexual. I was watching the Netflix show Sense8 when it first came out, and I went through the entire show once, and then I was having a conversation by, with my bisexual community about it, and someone said that the uh, Freema Ajiman character was bisexual, and that she said that she was, and I went back and I watched it all, and she never says anything about being with a guy. But one thing I did notice was that in her hair, she wore on her dreads the bisexual colors. And I, had, I watched the entire series and I noticed it, but never really thought about it before. And I thought, there, that could be kind of brilliant because something subtle like that, you don't know unless, you don't see unless you're looking for so that you could wear it in you know, the straight community without having to come out and it'll be there and no one will see it and that'll be perfect. Now the problem is that not all of us have hair.
<laughs> no. But we do have another piece of real estate on us that all of us have and that wouldn't be out of the place to have something. And it's not our ears because now we're not all pierced or like glasses or our shirts because we do laundry and we can only wear a shirt once. It is our wrist. Everyone has free real estate between the wrist and the elbow that you could put anything on and people use to put things on there now and it would just blend in. We could wear the bicolors on our wrist subtly or upfrontly. We could wear it all the time. If we wear long sleeve shirts, we can tuck it in underneath. We can show it on top. When we go to a club, we can flash it. Hey, and there would be. And this could be our thing. We can make our own. We can buy it inexpensively. Everyone can do it. And I know I'm going to because I want the people I want to know to know. And it's subtle enough that the people who I don't want to know will never pick up on it. So the question is, what should I wear? Option number one, this. This is just like one of those little rubber things, like the Live Strong things. I got this from Bisexual Org for free. They were just giving it as a giveaway. And I like it because, first of all, I'm a masculine dude. And I'm not about to feminine up just because I'm wearing something on my wrist. And I like these dark colors. And it kind of goes with anything. It's really casual. And I, I thought it would be too much when I first put it on. But no, it's not. It's just, it's just there. And it's colorful. And I wear colors. So it kind of works. So this is option number one. Option number two and three I got from Etsy.com. The first one is this. This I kind of like because it's uh, like nor it's like normal on all the other sides except for one spot that has the flag. So if I want, I can put it on top of my wrist, like here. Or if I want, I can put it on the inside of my wrist. I could wave and it could just be there um, if I wanted to like give a signal to somebody. What do you think? That's number us uh, option number two, and then option number three is this, which is very simple or very similar to the last one, but just has a little bit more style to it. So those are the three options. One, two, and three. Which one should I choose? Please let me know in the comments section below. I'm really curious to know. And, and whatever is the winner is the one I'm going to wear. And from this point forward, whenever I am in a club, I am going to look at a person's risk to determine whether or not they are trying to let me know that they are bisexual. And I will be wearing this so that they can know that I am. And hopefully that one's inspire conversation because I do want to talk to bisexuals in clubs. I want to meet you because, you know, we're cooler. So that's it. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up and get your bracelet. And subscribe to the channel because I do many videos on the bisexual topic. And I think you'd enjoy them. Until the next video. Stay cooler, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler. <laughs> Bye.